I'm not exaggerating when I say that Catalina Island, California is one of my favorite places to visit in the entire world. However, there is a right way to do Catalina Island and a wrong way to do Catalina Island. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the 10 things I wish I knew before going to Catalina Island. Oh, hi, Mac. Number one, getting there. Of course, if you're going to Catalina Island, you do need to plan not only your hotel or where you're staying or whatever, but of course the accommodation to get to Catalina Island. Now the main way most people do it is with the Catalina Express. It's the main boat or ferry that brings you from a given location off the coast of Southern California to Catalina Island. And in addition, I do wanna mention this as a side note, if you do book the ferry or the boat, you will see that they're gonna bring you to Avalon. When it comes to Catalina Island, and I will talk about this a little bit later in the video, the main city or town or whatever word you wanna use is Avalon. When it comes to getting there, like I said, you have a couple of different options. One is to take the ferry. If you do take the ferry, it takes about an hour to get from one port to the other. And in addition, when it comes to bringing luggage, it's very similar to an airline. So typically one personal item and one carry-on. In addition, the round trip ticket is going to cost you about 80 ish dollars i will say unfortunately it's gotten more expensive over the years but you're looking at about 80 ish dollars round trip to go there and come back one last thing i feel like i have to mention about the catalina express is the parking this is super annoying i gotta be honest that you're like okay 80 ish dollars round trip and i've said this before in other videos i feel like when i go to catalina island i'm in a whole other country i'm not exaggerating it is so beautiful there so i'm like all right it's almost like, in a sense, this is the way I look at it, 80-ish bucks to go to a whole other country. Now, the typical port I ferry out of is Long Beach. When you go to park at the Long Beach parking garage right next to the Catalina Express, it's about, like, I think $24 a day. So if you're going for, like, say, two days, like, say you're going just there for the day, spending the night there, coming back the next day, you might have to spend close to $50 just for parking. On one end, you're like, all right, it's just $24 a day, but it can add up very fast. There are a couple other ways of getting there that aren't as common. One is by helicopter. If you wanna go there in style and everything, keep in mind though, it's gonna be a lot more expensive than the Catalina Express, but hey, you get the beautiful views. It's a very unique experience. The second thing is you can jet ski there. I'm gonna be honest, I don't wanna be bashed by this, but I've only heard negative things about jet skiing to Catalina Island. Now jet skiing itself, Amazing, it's, it's so much fun. It's almost like you're uh, you're in a go-kart on the water. However, it can take, it depends on how long you go and all that kind of stuff. I've heard of people taking up to like two or three hours to go from Southern California to then get to the island. And it's one of those things, the way they described it to me, that at first you're like, oh, this is so much fun. We're jet skiing, it's so beautiful out. And then after an hour, you're like, all right, I just kind of want to get there. And then after another hour, you're like, okay, I'm tired, I'm exhausted. I just got to get, to the island. If you do wanna go jet skiing, from what I've heard from people, cause I'm gonna stress, I've personally never done that. But if you do wanna go jet skiing, just go jet skiing on the island, as opposed to jet skiing to the island. Number two, the day trip. This is a big thing a lot of people do. Being honest, I feel like when I meet people on the island, about half of them that are just kind of visiting are usually there just for the day. This is a great day activity. Like say you wanna have a really good Saturday or Sunday or whatever your schedule kind of allows it, you can easily go just for the day. The first ferry leaves around 6 a.m. and the last ferry leaves around 7 or 8 p.m. from the island. So let's say if you leave at 5 a.m., you get there at 6 a.m. because remember it takes about an hour. And then let's say you have to leave at 7 p.m. for example, that's a good 12 or 13 hours you have to spend the entire day there, do what you want with the amenities, the attractions, the food, et cetera, et cetera. And especially if you're in, let's say, a peak season, some of the hotels can cost a lot of money for that night. So doing a day trip is a great option to check out the island in full without breaking the bank. Number three, the activities. Now this could be an entire video in itself, but there's so much to do on the island. You can rent a golf cart and drive around the island. In case you didn't know, which is pretty cool, 90% of the vehicles on the island are actual golf carts and they have license plates on them. I just love the look and the feel of that. Another thing, as you can imagine, is kind of any adventure type activities. You can go kayaking, powder boarding, jet skiing in the water. In addition, in terms of being on the island itself, you have things like an obstacle course. You have zip lining, which is super fun to do where you get a beautiful view of the entire island as you're kind of zip lining down. There's just so much to do. Couple things I will say though. One, 
Probably not surprising, some of these do cost a lot of money, like very overpriced compared to other areas that I've been to. You're on an island, it's a very touristy type feel, so keep that in mind. The second thing is to book them in advance. Now, of course it depends. When it comes to kayaking, you can probably just walk up to the kayak section, they have a bunch of them. You, within reason, don't really have to ever worry about them selling out too much. However, with zip lining or jet skiing, they fill up very fast. So I do suggest do this in advance. And the third thing, which is a very underrated one when it comes to the island, is talk to your hotel. It does depend on your situation or whatever. There are some packages, like say with your hotel, that say, hey, not only do you pay for, you know, staying here, but for an extra $50 or whatever, I don't know, I'm just making this up, for an extra given amount, you then can do this one activity or this other activity or includes an activity. Even if, let's say, there's not like a package or anything, do ask your hotel or let's say the concierge desk because they might say, hey, you know what? Yeah, we don't really have like a package deal, but because you're staying with us, we'll give you a coupon that gives you 10 or 20% off this one main attraction. Speaking of that, let's talk about the hotels. I always suggest, especially for Catalina Island, do some research about the hotels. The reason why is one, as you can imagine, you might get a better deal. Just look at the pricing. I will say, again, probably not surprising. The hotels can be kind of pricey, but you never know, you might be able to get a good deal. The second thing is look at what the hotels have. Because you're in a very beach heavy area, some hotels might not have all the typical amenities compared to other hotels you've been at. Now, of course, if you spend a lot of money, there are some hotels there that have everything you can think of in terms of Wi-Fi, air conditioning, they have all the amenities that you want. However, there's other hotels, and again, it depends on the hotel, that don't have that. For example, there's one time I went, and I remember at this hotel, there was no air conditioning whatsoever. This is also during the summer, and the main like ceiling fan broke. They didn't tell us that. So I just slept, partly sweating throughout the night. Wasn't the best experience, but remember, you are in a beach town, so that is something you do have to keep in mind when it comes to the hotels. If like say you're somebody who's like, you know what? I don't really care that much. To me, I'm not gonna lie, I don't really, I travel a lot. So I love being in hostels in those situations. So it didn't really bother me as much. However, if let's say you're like, look, I need air conditioning. I need this, I need that. Do talk to the hotels and get as much information as you can beforehand. Another thing I do wanna say too, kind of on the side note is Airbnbs. I gotta be honest, I think Airbnbs are the worst way to go on the island. They're just insanely overpriced. Now you never know, you might find a nice gem or something like that. There have been a couple times where I found one Airbnb or two that I was like, actually doing the math out and location, blah, blah, blah. This isn't that bad compared to a hotel. But just being honest, when it comes to the island, it's a lot easier to stay in hotels than Airbnbs. Number five, offline maps. This is a huge pro tip that I suggest anytime you're traveling. But in this case, talking about Catalina Island being blunt, the reception on the island is a bit met. Of course, it depends on where you are. In the main area of Avalon, it's okay. Being honest, it's a bit spotty, but it's okay. But let's say if you go to Descanso Beach Club, for example, I've never had reception at Descanso Beach Club. So one huge pro tip I suggest is if you pull up Google Maps, you can go to your profile and click offline maps. And what it will do is it will download the entire kind of GPS and the entire area offline. So even if you don't have any service or anything, you can still kind of type in your location and where you want to go. Of course, it doesn't calculate things like traffic or anything like that, but it's still a good tool to have. So you always know exactly where you're going. In addition, one, this is completely free, which is pretty awesome. And two, the amount of space it takes up on your phone is so little. So let's say if you're like, well, Mark, I want to take pictures. I want to get videos on the island. Don't worry. I think like when I did it on Catalina Island, I think it took up like 43 megabytes. And in case that sounds super technical, 43 megabytes is nothing. Just trust me. Offline maps are a great way to go, especially on the island. However, the layout, I gotta be honest, isn't super crazy. So let's talk about that. What is the island layout? Typically, you will arrive in Avalon at the Avalon port. The entire town slash city is super small and easily, easily, easily walkable. Now there's mainly three slash two parts of Avalon. One is kind of the main city slash town. Then you walk and there's a casino or they call it the casino, but it's actually not a casino. It's just like a movie theater. So I went there, I remember for the Step Brothers movie screening when I was there for the Catalina wine mixer. It's literally just like an auditorium. And then you keep walking and kind of the end of Avalon, so to speak, 
You have Descanso Beach Club. That's also where they do things like zip lining, any obstacle courses, kayaking, et cetera, et cetera. And walking there, let's say from the main point of Avalon to Descanso Beach Club, you're looking at, I don't know, 10-ish minute walk, depending how far away you are from Descanso. So walking around the island is super easy. Again, I do suggest having the offline maps just in case you get a good suggestion for a place, or if you want to, I don't know, not forget exactly where your hotel is, but getting around the island, gotta be honest, is unbelievably easy. With that being said, however, you may be wondering like, okay, you're talking a lot about Avalon, but what about the rest of the island? Avalon is only one part of that. Now there's mainly two towns slash like areas, I will say of the island that are very like populated. One is Avalon and two is Two Harbors. Those are really the main two parts of the island that people go to visit in terms of like, again, a town or basically a place with a restaurant, if you wanna buy stuff or whatever. So those are the main two places you're gonna hear about. In terms of the rest of the island, there's a lot of places to check out in terms of hiking, camping, and a lot more. But really when you look at visiting the island, if let's say you wanna go somewhere or whatever, Typically, Avalon and Two Harbors are your biggest choices. Number seven, groceries. This is probably, maybe out of this entire list, the best pro tip, the best thing, or the biggest thing that I wish I knew before going is there's a grocery store on the island called Vons. In case you don't know, Vons is basically like the main grocery store chain in this area, not just the island, but Southern California and everything. And the prices aren't really that bad. If anything, they're pretty comparable, if not equal, to LA. I remember when going to the island, I was like, okay, I gotta make sure I stock up on food because I don't wanna buy, you know, a $20 burger or whatever. I gotta make sure I have to stock up on this and this, make sure I have enough stuff, you know, make sure I have enough alcohol with me so I don't have to worry about buying $20 drinks or whatever. But when you go there, the Vons is very easy to walk to and you can just walk there and buy groceries, buy everything you want. You don't even have to really pack as much. Let's say you forget sunscreen. Like say you want to make a sandwich and you don't want to bring the bread and all that kind of stuff, just walk to Vons and buy it. It's a lot easier than you think. It's not like you're trapped there where you can only go to a restaurant or only go to a bar or whatever. You can easily go to the grocery store. In addition, there's also a liquor store right there as well. And again, the prices really aren't that bad. So like say if you don't have to lug alcohol with you on the boat and all this kind of stuff, you just buy it there. And on that note, what are the general prices like? This, in my opinion, is one of the best parts about Catalina Island and Avalon. The prices, I gotta be blunt, are pretty comparable, even in some cases cheaper than here in LA, which is kind of crazy to say. Like I said in the beginning of this video and, and, and a bunch of other videos, when I go to Catalina Island, I literally feel like I'm in a different country. And so for me, the way I look at it is the biggest expenses are getting there in terms of the ferry and the hotel. But if you're doing a day trip, that doesn't really matter. And of course, as a side note, the parking, I feel like I do have to mention that. But if you think about it, like say for a hundred-ish dollars, talking about the ferry plus the parking, you feel like you're in another country. And in addition, the prices there really aren't that bad. One, like I mentioned, when it comes to the groceries, like say you want to buy alcohol at the liquor store, or whatever, pretty much the same, honestly, as LA. No issue there whatsoever. When it comes to the restaurants and drinks, like say at bars or whatnot, it depends on where you go. Cause there are some restaurants that the food is a little overpriced, I'm not gonna lie, but not as bad as you think. In addition, when it comes to the drinks, yeah, like say the drinks for a beer, I think last time I was there, it was like eight or nine dollars for a beer, 15 or 16 dollars for a mixed drink. That's kind of comparable for better or for worse than LA. Now, of course, it does depend on where you go, though. If you go to Descanso Beach Club, their drinks are about $16 for a mixed drink. Huge pro tip, the Descanso Destroyer, you need one or two and you're good. There's a reason why it's called the Destroyer. That's the way to get the uh, best bang for your buck, so to speak. However, when it comes to the main section of Avalon, there's a place, remember, called Catalina Cantina. There's a happy hour where it's $4 beers. I'm not gonna lie, there's some parts of Catalina Island when it comes to getting drinks that's significantly cheaper than here in LA. Of course, as you can imagine, the more upscale the place is, the more expensive it's gonna be and vice versa. The more kind of low key it is, the cheaper it's gonna be. But I gotta say, if let's say you're trying to do Catalina Island on a budget and you're worried like, oh shoot, how much is food gonna cost? What about drinks and whatnot? Not as much as you think. I gotta say, the prices on the island are not that bad at all. Number nine, the lockers. This is just a subtle thing 
but it can be such a game changer. And that is when you initially get off the ferry, right when you land, there's actual lockers that you can put your stuff in. They're about, I think it's like $2 to store your stuff. You have to do that annoying thing where you have to have cash on you. You can pretty easily exchange it with let's say someone there, or whatever, uh, kind of at the, the, the main desk or whatnot. But what's great about this is if let's say, especially going for the day, or let's say it's that situation where you checked out of your hotel and they won't hold on to your luggage, you can go to the lockers. It's so convenient being like, all right, I'm gonna go to the locker, put my stuff in the locker, lock it up for a couple bucks. That way I don't have to kind of lug it around the island the entire day and no big deal. It's almost like having like a mini storage system to yourself right then and there. I will say though, as a sign of being very transparent, let's say you wanna go back and forth. The last time I was there, it was kind of annoying that once you open the locker again, you have to repay it to lock it. Like I said, it's only a couple bucks, but it is something to keep in mind. Let's say you're like, all right, I'll come back and grab my sunscreen or I'll come back and grab my whatever the, the item is, you might have to pay to relock it. And another thing is those lockers are pretty far, maybe like 15 to 20 minute walk from let's say Descanso Beach Club being like the furthest point. So let's say you're like, all right, I'm gonna go to Descanso Beach Club, have some drinks, have some food. Oh shoot, you know what? I'm gonna go back and grab my whatever. It is a pretty, it's not a super lengthy walk, but it's enough where it might be a bit annoying. So just keep that in mind. And number 10, explore. This is something I suggest to pretty much anybody when traveling, but I think especially in Catalina Island, there's just so many hidden gems and so many things to check out. And my best suggestion, obviously, when you're going, is if you do wanna do any activities or attractions, do book them. I really wanna do zip lining and jet skiing. Of course, book that. But let's say you're just planning on going and you're like, you know what? Let's just see what happens and just kind of wing it. I think that's the best way to do it. Maybe book one activity and then the rest of the time, just walk around. Take a second to relax. At Descanso Beach Club, for example, you can sit in the sand, whether you want to be literally in the sand or in a chair on the sand, and they will be bringing you drinks and food you can eat and look out. If let's say you want to have time to go in the water, if let's say you want to walk around town and go into all these different shops, if let's say you want to rent a golf cart and drive around the island for a little bit, there's just so much to do there that if anything, I think if you're trying to book too much stuff, you might miss out on the kind of chill vibes. And I'm kind of like, I know it sounds super California when I say that, but you might miss out on the chill vibes to just walk around. There's so much to do and so many beautiful sights to see that exploring is one of the best ways to do it. And now a bonus point of something I really wish I knew before going to Catalina Island, the bees. Now it does depend on, upon like the season or the time of a uh, year. I believe the peak is around September, but this is something I've not seen or ever heard of on any travel site, except one comment that I saw that said, do you like bees? Like really like bees? This is something I feel like I had to mention that I've not really seen anywhere else. But like I said, if you are allergic to bees, make sure you bring the necessary precautions, the medications, whatever you have to take when going to the island. Again, it depends on kind of the time of the year. Honestly, like I said, I believe the peak is around September where the bees are everywhere. I will say the bees are not aggressive. Like it's not like they're going to be attacking you and stinging you and everything, but they are depending on when you go everywhere. I remember, you know, when I was at Descanso Beach Club, for example, that's one of the most notorious spots of Avalon, which is why I keep mentioning it. And I remember ordering a drink and seeing the bees everywhere flying around like the alcohol, especially like the mixers and the kind of garnishes in terms of like pineapple and whatnot. They were everywhere. Even when it comes to me drinking a drink, I'd have a sip, put it down, and if I, let's say, left alone for a few minutes, there would be like three or four bees just right on top of the drink. And like I said, they're not aggressive. I've never gotten stung. I've never even heard about anyone getting stung. And being honest, in some ways, it isn't that big of a deal because they're pretty much harmless. But on the other end, they are a big deal just because, especially if it's like a peak bee season, they are everywhere. And again, if you're allergic, this is something you have to keep in mind.